Welcome. So I'm Darren Bell. We're going to be uh, going through chapter 10 uh, from our textbook today. It's going to be about inventory and inventory methods. Or, uh, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. So our different learning objectives are going to be here. We're going to basically talk about inventory and uh, the different methods. We're going to be using periodic and perpetual, so we'll talk a little bit about both. Uh, we're going to focus maybe a little bit more in on the, on the uh, perpetual method, and then we're going to talk about exactly how inventory uh, errors may impact the income statement and the balance sheet. Uh, in the end, we're going to talk about some financial ratios and analysis using the inventory. So here's a, here's a couple of things, right? Why inventory is so important. So number one, uh, there's a lot of money in inventory. For a lot of companies, this is a, a very important piece of their financial situation is how they manage their inventory. Uh, there also is some strategies involved in inventory. Number two here, like when inventory is purchased and uh, how that inventory is managed. And then of course, inventory prices are constantly changing as the economy changes, as inflation comes into play. Uh, prices typically are going up, sometimes maybe down, but mostly going up. And um, we also, are really focused around inventory as it is our cost of goods sold, right? It helps uh, set up opportunities for us to create revenue and for our company and hopefully profit in the end, right? We wanna keep that margin good and be able to get the profit that we need. So as we set up inventory, we see that it's on uh, these two financial statements, right? So the balance sheet, it's an asset. So our inventory, sometimes it's called merchandise inventory. So that's just maybe a different name for it. But inventory is definitely on the balance sheet. It is, it is a current asset. On the income statement, our inventory shows up as cost of goods sold. It is an expense. So it's an expense over here on our income statement. Uh, on our multi-step income statement, it helps us see what our um, our margin is right so sales or, or net sales minus cost of goods sold helps us get to that gross margin so that's where it shows up and so as we track inventory and we do our inventory uh, methods costing methods we're going to see that it's going to impact our balance on our balance sheet and also how much of that flows through as an expense onto the income statement so this is probably the, the most important slide of the entire um, chapter. So if you understand this concept, and if you come to understand this concept as we walk through the costing uh, methods, then uh, this is kind of the big picture. It should hopefully all fall into place if you understand how these things work together. So we'll kind of walk through it in order here. So as we begin the accounting period, we have beginning inventory. So this is what is on the balance sheet as we begin, or, or really it's our ending balance from last accounting period, right? So our ending balance becomes our beginning balance as we start off. Uh, throughout the month, we're gonna purchase inventory, right? So we're gonna purchase inventory, and together the beginning inventory, what we had at, on hand, and what we buy to sell and put in our inventory are all the goods available for sale. So that's everything that we have available for sale. This could be at the beginning of the month, we make our purchases and we have everything set to begin our, our month or our year, or these purchases could happen throughout the year, right? So we could have a purchase and a sale and a purchase and a sale, right? So it doesn't have to be all up front, but the main concept is, as we think about it as a whole, our beginning inventory plus all the purchases that we make are all the, really the goods available for sale um, in total. So as we flip to the other side of this, uh, we see the, the, the back end, right? So we have our ending inventory. This is our inventory balance at the end of the, end of the accounting period, end of the month, quarter, year, whenever we're getting that uh, cost, 
whenever we're doing our costing method. Uh, so whatever is still there, right, is in our inventory. Whatever's not there in our ending inventory has been sold. So cost of goods sold is the other part of this puzzle, right? So these two things, beginning inventory plus purchases is goods available for, available for sale. Goods available, available for sale is also equal to ending inventory plus cost of goods sold. So these two uh, pieces of the puzzle, right, are equal. So they have a relationship. So if we happen to have three out of the four, meaning beginning inventory, purchases, ending inventory, cost of goods sold, those four, if we have three out of the four, we can calculate the missing piece, right? So we can rearrange this, this relationship. And um, there are also some other uh, methods of calculating these pieces as we understand what our uh, margins are, what our uh, sales are overall, right um, and and all of our costing as well we can calculate some of these numbers if we have to back into them so to speak so th this is the main relationship here so going forward the idea of tracking inventory here is to help us figure out cost of goods sold right that's going to be an important piece and we also have to figure out what our ending inventory is here in the end at the end of the month and so if we can kind of get these two pieces set that helps us get our balance sheet right and it helps us get our income statement correct so both of those things fit into the inventory is the balance sheet right this is balance sheet and cost of goods sold is going to be on our income statement okay so here here uh, is kind of a sample with some actual numbers right that we're going to be doing so we have our beginning inventory and our purchases so we know those two together give us all the goods available for sale so in units or you know if we have like uh, if we're selling bicycles for example that's 70 bicycles right whatever whatever units we have this in uh, if it's gallons or pounds or whatever right that's that's the units and then um, as we have our cost here we see that we have 490 uh, dollars worth of goods available available for sale so at the very end right we have our ending inventory here it is right here this shows up on the balance sheet uh, 18 units at, at $126 that's on the balance sheet so we can solve for we can say well um, out of $490 worth of goods available for sale we have 126 left so if we take the difference between those two, that'll tell us how much we actually sold, right? Because if our inventory isn't there anymore, then it goes on to cost of goods sold. It's gone, right? Okay, so, so hopefully that's, that's a good example of, of uh, this that I just showed you, right? That's the relationship. Uh, this is an actual problem that shows you how the numbers fit together. So looking back, this is actually looking back to chapter six, right, that we just covered. So as a buyer, oops, there we go. As a buyer, right, this is order and inventory. This is our, it's not working here. There we go. This is our order and inventory, right? This is our buyer option. So these are some of the, um, these are, these are, this is the initial purchase, right, of items. If we're selling inventory, then depending on which method we're using, this is the seller side of the transaction, right? We know that with our perpetual method, we have two basic journal entries that go together. One records the sale and payment, the other one records the inventory and cost of goods sold. So it's super important for us, right? This is really where we're focused here on chapter 10 is getting that cost of goods sold and inventory right there. And then we'll we'll figure out as well on the periodic method, right? How we're going to get that as well, because we need to get that as well, no matter which method we're using. 
Okay, so now we're, we're moving over to the methods, right? So I've been talking about methods. So we have four methods that we're going to be using to do inventory. Uh, really, when you for any particular business, you have to pick one to use, right? You can't use all four at the same time. So, so you use one, you use one of these methods, and you go with it. And so they all have, you know, strengths and weaknesses, kind of uh, depending on your business, one may make more sense to use uh, versus the other one. So let's go ahead and go through them. So the first one here is specific identification. Typically, this is used for um, items that are expensive and that are customized. So if I'm making a large luxury yacht, right, a boat, big, big fancy boat, uh, that's expensive, that's customized typically, I'm going to track the inventory of my yachts with the specific identification method. I know how much each yacht costs to make. Uh, it's in my inventory. When I sell it, I can assign the cost for that yacht to that sale. So specific identification. Right? Cars are another one. Unique gems are another one. All these unique expensive items. So the other ones are going to be based on flow here, right? So we've got our flow. Uh, this one is called first in, first out, FIFO. FIFO is another way to put it, right? And so first in, first out means that the items that you buy first in time or the older items, right? The older items in your inventory are the ones w that you uh, sell first okay the physical flow of actually how you do it may actually differ but this is a method on how you cost them so if your physical method matches your costing method that's great if it doesn't and you still use this costing method that's the costing method right so if I stack things like if I'm selling uh, like uh, coca-cola for example and I stack my my uh, uh, cans on the shelf and my older ones are in the back and somebody comes and takes one of the front ones and I sell that one first but I'm still using first in first out I'm going to cost those items that are sold uh, for with the older how much the older cans of pop cost me so we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later so your physical flow does not need to necessarily match how you cost but um, but it's usually a good idea to match it up somehow, right? To try to get as close to possible as on how the actual flow works for your company. So the other one is last in, first out. And you, cause you, as you can imagine, uh, right, last in, first out is kind of opposite of the first in, first out, which is uh, first in, first out was we sell our oldest items first. Last in, first out, we're selling our newest items first. So the oldest ones stay in inventory, okay? And so that's how that one's set up. And then the weighted average, the weighted average here is, uh, it's not necessarily which one comes first or last. We average them all out. So we sell them at an average cost. And there's some calculations that we do in that. So there's our four methods. Okay, so here, here is an example. This is kind of usually the typical setup when we're doing these inventory costing methods is we have the data for our, not only uh, for, for our beginning inventory and our ending inventory, but we also have, right, so that's up at, the, up at the top here is our beginning inventory. This is where we're starting. Down here at the bottom is our ending inventory. This is all, everything in between are the, the changes in, right? So these are sold items when we actually sell them these are going to be purchases when we're actually adding items to our inventory okay so that's that's the the typical setup for this we so as this happens right so we have this information here we can throw any method at it we can use any method to to use for this uh, scenario we can do the specific identification the FIFO the LIFO weighted average so it just depends on this, um, the, this, uh, this company, which one they uh, opt into using. So first one that we're gonna look at is, well, let's, let's assume that they're gonna use the specific identification one, okay? 
and so they're able to know exactly, okay, we're going to sell one of the units out of lot number two here, and the unit cost us to get in our inventory. This is not the sales price for the unit. This is the cost, right? So we need to make sure we we uh, separate those when we go through this as well. Sometimes we'll be told what the sales price is. Right here it's 36 bucks, right? That's the sales price, not the cost, right? So that's gonna go towards our revenue, 36 bucks. Our cost of goods sold and the adjustment to the inventory is gonna be $27. That's the cost of the item in inventory. So inventory, again, we track our inventory according to what it costs us to have that inventory. So um, that's, that's an important piece of the puzzle there. So of course our revenue minus our cost is gonna be our margin here. Here's our margin of $9 down at the end. And that's specific identification. So another one is we're gonna do FIFO. So we're gonna put, we're gonna say this item that we sold is one of our older ones. So the, the lot number one is the oldest item, so we're gonna sell one of those. Those older ones cost us $21. So back when we bought those, it was a little bit cheaper to get that in our inventory. And so this changes, again, the sales price is the same. Our cost is now different because we're using another method. Gross margin is different, okay? So there's our margin is $15. LIFO is our next one. This is last in, first out. So our newer item right here. So lot three is our newer items. Those are way more expensive, $33 a piece, right? So the cost of our inventory is going up here. We're gonna go ahead and move that $33 over here, subtract it from our sales price. Sales price, of course, is the same, right? And then our margin is $3. Okay, so that's, that's last in, first out, basically, on there. Okay, so then our last one here is what's called the weighted average method. So with this one, we have to do a little math. So the math we're doing is we're averaging everything out, right? So we need to add up our total number of units, and we add up our total cost, which is our units times the a number of units times the unit cost, right? So our total cost here. And then, so that's all of this above, right? All of this right here is all of our costs. So if we multiply that up and add it together, that gives us our total cost for inventory when we make our sale, right? And then we divide it by the total number of units, and that gives us our, basically the cost, oops, let's see if I can do this, cost per unit right is what we're getting here cost per unit and it's an average right that we're doing there so our average cost per unit is twenty seven dollars and sixty two cents this is this is normal on what we would look at we would go back and look at our other methods our FIFO and our LIFO and we're gonna see that yeah sure enough this is this is average on those so twenty seven sixty two our LIFO was thirty three so that's a high FIFO was 21, so really it's, it, in a way, it's also, we can see that, yep, it's kind of right in between those two. It's going to be in between those two somewhere, and it's going to be averaged out. So that's our weighted average method. It's a little bit more work. Um, we can do this one pretty easy if we set up the accounting system to do it in our computer, right? But um, in this chapter, we're learning how it works and all the pieces, so we're kind of doing some of these manually. Okay, so there, here we have them all laid out. Specific identifications on the left, FIFO, LIFO, and then our weighted average. All right, and they each look different. So really the idea here is, which method are we gonna use? Well, um, is this really, does this really impact our profitability? Uh, in the long term, not necessarily, right? Uh, if our inventory cost is rising, then LIFO is gonna is going to show a lower margin, lower profits for us. If, if uh, in that same case, it's inventory. If inventory cost is rising, then our FIFO will show our high. Uh, average is going to be right in between these, right? Uh, specific identification. It it depends on that one, right? It depends on which one we sell, of course, because it's specific to whichever one we're selling, and what our margin is going to be on that. So. 
I'll just tell you that most companies will uh, use LIFO for tax purposes, right? So the idea is you pay tax on your profit, right? So which one here, which option are you going to pay less tax on? It's going to be LIFO, LIFO method, especially when our, the cost of our inventory to get new inventory in is rising. LIFO is going to give us basically the lowest tax burden of all of them. So again, in the long run, everything will kind of, you know, it'll all equal out, but um, there are some advantages of picking one over the other. Okay, we're going to go through these methods really quickly. Another kind of example here. This is kind of in the example side of the slide. So that's the basic introduction that we just did. If you want to get into examples for periodic and perpetual, this is it. The second half of the video. Okay, so we've got the, got the information here. Same information that we had before. We've got some updated sales prices here that we're looking at. Um, we've got multiple sales, so two sales, and uh, we've got two purchases in here. So here is periodic using our specific identification method. And that's that one's pretty easy, right, because it's specific, so it's going to be pretty much the same for periodic and perpetual. It's going to be the same, same numbers, right? So we know which ones we sold. We go and we find those. And, um, and we cost them and we adjust our inventory down for those items that we sold. So it says here um, for sale January 5th, right? At the very end here, we're gonna, or this is periodic, so we're doing this at the end of the period, right? Not during, perpetuals during, so this is the very end. So at the very end, we're looking back and we're saying, oh, it looks like we sold uh, 120 units from lot one and we sold 180 units, uh, 20, right, from lot one, and then 160 from lot two. Okay, so that, that second sale that we did here on July 15th was split, right? So some of lot one, some of lot two, and so we're gonna figure that out as well. We've got our cost of goods sold from those two calculations, and, um, the, num the, the amount from lot one, the amount from lot two, there's our cost of goods sold. Here's our ending inventory at the end. These two together should equal the goods available for sale, which should also equal beginning inventory and all the items we purchased, right? So we can double check these numbers. So we have all these numbers for us right here. So that's specific identification. So there's our cost of goods sold. Um, we have our, we're able to, to figure out from this our gross margin on that as well. So here's uh, the FIFO for the um, periodic method. Again, we're doing this at the end of the month. So at that point, we know what happened. We know what all of our items were and we're able to, to go through and, and sell it. So uh, the 150 here that we, um, So what we sold here between the two, right? We sold 150 of them are from our our beginning inventory, right? So we sold all the beginning inventory, and then we sold uh, again lot from lot one. We sold all those because we gotta we gotta sell all those that are the oldest. And then uh, the rest are from lot two, which are basically the second oldest, is what we're going to do on there. Okay, so this this gives us a different um, cost of goods sold and a different ending inventory value, which in turn will give us a different gross margin than the specific identification. Okay, so periodic uh, uh, for the LIFO. Again, we're going to be looking at the um, selling the 
uh, newest units, right? The last in, first out, right? So we're looking at lot three. We're going to grab all these from lot three and sell them, 210 units. And then 90 from lot two. So we're going to be working our way um, back this direction, up this way, right? Um, newest to oldest on there. So that gives us a lot more cost of goods sold here, lowers our ending inventory value, and will greatly reduce our gross margin on here. Our weighted average in the very end is going to be uh, the, so we're going to take all of our units, the cost, the goods available for sale, right, our whole um, the total dollar cost, right? These, these, this is going to be basically this number, right? Goods available for sale divided by our total units, 585. That's going to give us an average for everything. This one's one that's really different than the perpetual, and I'll show you why. So, with the periodic, we get to average everything that we had in the entire month, no matter when we sold or when we purchased, right? The perpetual one, we average it out as we go. So here with the periodic, we average it out at the end of the month. With the perpetual, we average it out with every uh, sale and purchase. So it's a, uh, it's a rolling average is what happens with that one. And of course, there's our gross margin, which is kind of in between FIFO and LIFO, right? Okay, so now we're moving on to the perpetual method. It's really gonna be pretty similar to the periodic, but there are some key differences here. Okay, so as we're rolling through here, the perpetual method, the way it works is this. When we make a sale, that's when we decide which items we're actually selling out of our inventory. So this first sale on July 5th, right? What items do we have to sell? Well, we only have the beginning inventory to sell. So all those 120 are gonna be sold out of beginning inventory, July 1st. And so those are the ones that we sell first. So we're gonna go ahead and, and add those on there. Okay. Now for our second sale, right? We sell 180 total. Do we have any left from our beginning inventory? Yep, we sell 120, so we have um, 30 left over. So, oh, this is specific identification, I'm sorry. I'm messing it up here. So this is gonna be specific identification based on this information over here, right? So specific identification, we, we have the information of where, where we sold them from, so we don't have to follow the order. So it just is what it is. We're able to grab those and assign the cost from the different lots. And there is our specific identification uh, cost value, 8895 which should be as we go back here to uh, that one, it's gonna be the exact same as the periodic, 8895 right there, we see that. So specific identification is pretty much the same periodic or perpetual, okay? And then we're able to calculate our gross margin. Of course, back looking back here, we also know what our ending inventory is right here, right? There's our ending inventory as well. Okay, so our FIFO. No, so this is where I was kind of headed. Sorry, I got, got kind of got ahead of myself. So this one, as we do the FIFO and LIFO and weighted average, we're gonna have to go from the beginning of the month downward and, and follow and track with the dates. So when we have a sale, we're going to be able to look and say, which items do we have for sale at this point? So there we have 150. That's all we have, so we sell those items. We have 30 left. Those 30 items are the next in line to sell. So when we sell down here on July 15th, sure enough, those are the 30 down here that we sell, the oldest ones, first in, first out. Uh, then we go to our second oldest batch, which is the items that we purchased here on uh, July 10th, right, 225. We only take 150 of them, which leaves 75. So really our ending inventory is our newest item, 75 of the second lot and 210 of the third lot. 
that gives us our ending inventory there. And our cost of goods sold, we add down in this column as 7,200. So that's gonna be the perpetual method. So let's let's look back at our at our periodic and see if it was the same. FIFO, periodic, cost of goods sold 7,200. So we got the same, right? It's gonna be the same. Same thing, FIFO and for periodic and perpetual. It just looks a little different because we're we're kind of going down by the date. Okay, so next one is gonna be um, LIFO, LIFO, right? So again, what we're gonna do on this one is we're gonna say when we make the sale, we're gonna sell our, our newest item that we have in stock. So as we sell these 120 here, the only ones we have to sell are the beginning inventory item. So we sell those. So this LIFO and FIFO in this case are the same, right? On this first sale, then we leave, that leaves us with with 30 here that fall down. Now we're going to do our second sale of a 180. Well, we don't we want to take our newest items here so that we leave the 30 from the beginning inventory there. We say no, we don't want to sell that one. We're going to sell the newest, which is 180 out of these new ones that we just purchased, which leaves us with 30 of the beginning inventory that could fall down and 45 of our second purchase, July 10 uh, purchase. So these all flow down and are in ending inventory at the very end. And then this is our cost of goods sold as we add it down to the bottom, 7380. So let's see if our uh, periodic is gonna be the same as this. So 7380 on the LIFO. Uh, so that's going to be different, right? So LIFO here on the periodic is different than the perpetual, because with this one we're able to sell. We're able to. Uh, we're doing it th this at the end of the month. So our newest items at the end of the month are the ones we just purchased. We don't have to follow in order by date. Periodic, we can only sell what we have. Therefore, for the LIFO one, the ones that we have at the moment maybe some pretty old ones they like this first one is in the beginning inventory right and so we don't get to slide down to the end of the month and sell those newest ones at the very end of the month with perpetual like we did with periodic so let's go ahead and do this last one this weighted average um, so on this one we keep a rolling average right so we keep a rolling average as we go on down through here this is the unit cost uh, column right so the idea is, is every time we buy new units, we average them out. At the very beginning, beginning inventory, this is our average. It's just the number, the total cost of what we have divided by the number of units. That is what we have in the beginning inventory. As we go down through here, we buy new units here, right? And as we buy new units, we get a new average. We add up our total cost divided by the units that we have, including our new units we just purchased. That gives us a new average. Same thing at the very end. We buy some new units, we get a new average. This average is what we use. Whatever the average is at the time of sale is the average we use for costing. So for our first sale here of 120 units, that is going to be, let me change my color here real quick, change it to green. So this 120 that we're selling here, this is going to be the average, right? That's what our average is, is $21. So that's what we cost them at. This 180, as we sell them here, our average is, we see right there, it's 26.29. That's our average. And so that's the average we sell them at. That's the cost associated with those items. Um, that very last average that we have on here, that's our average uh, at the end. We don't have any sales after that. So we use our average on the, on the perpetual. We use our average that we have at, at the time of sale. So that's gonna be uh, one of the differences with perpetual. And this number is gonna be different than the perpetual for, uh, or yeah, the weighted average for the uh, periodic. And so let's go ahead and go forward and compare these. Here's our gross margin which is right in between LIFO and FIFO. Um, so they're all gonna be different. 
right? They're all going to be different. Um, these that you're going to be doing here, really companies, they select their method and they go with it. If they're going to change their uh, method of inventory, um, the IRS uh, does not necessarily make it easy. Right, it is possible, but there's going to be some major accounting that's done, and you have to disclose a lot of stuff if you're going to change that. If you have a good reason for it, um, otherwise, companies, you know, they pick their method and they go with it. Okay, so last item on here um, is going to be just demonstrating. So, so if we mess up on our inventory somewhere, right? We record an entry wrong. Uh, we um, we record a purchase incorrectly, a sale, um, any of these, right, are incorrect, it's going to impact our income statement and our balance sheet. So let's go down through these real quick here. So cost of goods sold is overstated. So we overstated our cost of goods sold. So how is that going to impact the inventory and the income? So if we, if we overstated our cost of goods sold, then that means that our inventory and our net income are understated, right? Because our cost of goods sold reduces our net income. So if we overstated it, it means that it gives us a smaller net income. And our cost of goods sold offsets with our ending inventory. So if we overstate that, then our ending inventory is going to be smaller than it should be. So if we go the other direction, if we understate it, we're going to be we're going to be going the other direction. Inventory, right, is higher than it should be because we should have more cost of goods sold to offset it, but we don't. That was an error. Our net income as well is going to be higher than it should be because the cost of goods sold offsets the uh, net income, right? The revenue minus cost of goods sold equals net income. So if we have, if we don't have, uh, if we didn't state our cost of goods sold correctly, if we understated it, that means our net income is going to be higher than overstated, higher than it should be. Okay, so here's an error in ending inventory. So if we mess up our ending inventory numbers, so the way it works is our ending inventory, of course, becomes our beginning inventory. So as we begin with the wrong balance, then what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, the wrong numbers in the next period. Uh, so, so, um, so that's going to be impact our uh, next period. That's what it's going to impact. Um, over a two-year period, so we're going to go on to the next one, right? So we're going to go two periods forward. Uh, misstatement of ending inventory will balance themselves out. So for one, it'll be it'll be uh, higher low, and the next one it will be higher low. So they will balance out over time is the way it works on that. So that's going to be our ending inventory um, misstatements. All right. So these are these are um, kind of the years as they go, right, is kind of the idea. So if we misstate something incorrectly, like our ending inventory is understated by $1,500, then this ending inventory, right, becomes the beginning inventory for next period. And it's understated, so the uh, goods available for sale is understated, okay, as well. And then our inventory, um, as it carries through, uh, our endi ending inventory is, um, going to be understated and then it will uh, offset on the next period okay so this is this is kind of how they're connected so we got to compare them across All right understated cost of goods sold by 1500 our net income is understated uh, cost of goods sold is or overstated, understated, right? These are have opposite effects. Cost of goods sold is understated. That means our net income is overstated, right? So it goes opposite with cost of goods sold. So it offsets, right? Is what I'm is what we're saying. And so over the two periods, if our inventory is incorrect, it'll be under overstated on one and understated. 
and then it'll flip over on the next one and so it, it will correct itself. Doesn't mean that's that's good, it just means that's kind of the nature of the of uh, what happens if we uh, um, incorrectly understate our ending inventory or overstate it, it'd be opposite of what we show here. Okay, so now next is the ratios, right? So if we have any problems with ratios out here for your um, problem sets you're doing, these ratios are gonna be in your book, so they're gonna be like the green kind of box that are gonna show the calculations. So our inventory turnover ratio is gonna be there. It's gonna be calculated with our cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. One important thing is, is we have these averages. So on both of these, we have average inventory, average daily cost of goods sold. So the way, well, the way that works is, the average is gonna be the beginning plus the ending divided by two. Okay, so, so for some, it's gonna be one year, right? The ending inventory for one year plus the next year, right? So it could be, like for example, it could be year one and year two, that's the same thing. Add those two together and then divide by two, that'll give you the average. Because year one is, the in, year one's ending inventory is the beginning for year two Year two's ending is the ending, right? So the beginning and ending is, so it's year one plus year two, uh, add them together, divide by two. So same thing with the average here, right? The average is gonna be uh, the total, right? Uh, divided by the days on that one. So that's the average, right? On there, so that, that will uh, be good for us as we calculate them. We see them here, right? Our average inventory. Again, we add up, remember we add up those, divide by two, that gives us our average. Here, we're adding up the total and we're dividing by 365. That's our average days, right? That's how we average the days on there. So that's our ratios. So hopefully this helps. Uh, feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Uh, send me an email and we will um, help you out the best we can. Have a good one. Bye.